Welcome to the introduction session of SL1 Advanced Business Reporting ABR. So I am your lecturer Dasun Mendis. I am taking you through the financial reporting part of this SL1 paper. So uh, first of all these are the areas that we are going to cover in the presentation in this introduction session. First of all get to know your examination, what is the syllabus weightage and the paper structure of SL1 paper. Thereafter, recent changes to the syllabus in terms of the uh, SLFRSS, in terms of the SLFRSS as well as in terms of the risk and material misstatements which were introduced in the recent examination cycles. We need to look at these aspects, especially SLFRSS are relevant with the financial reporting aspect, risk of material misstatements are relevant to the governance, risk and ethics part. Right? So the details about that particular topic would be discussed by the lecturers who are covering the risk, governance and ethics part. But I will be discussing in a short what are the main changes in terms of both SLFRSS and the risk of material misstatements. Thereafter course content, how I am going to deliver this course, right? so the approach that I am going to follow. Thereafter study plan that you need to adhere into and finally prerequisite for the examination success. right? So, first of all you should understand this particular paper is a paper which look at integrative or integrated perspective which means it's a holistic paper. It's not purely about the financial reporting. In addition to the financial reporting, it actually this paper particularly guides you to act as a CFO in the future. So because of that, yes you need to have the knowledge about the financial reporting aspect in addition to that you also should know that okay how to identify the risk of material state material misstatements by looking at set of financial statements how to do the analysis by looking at the figures in the financial statements right so what are the relevant governance governance aspect that you need to know when you are working for an organization all these things would be covered in this paper now if i look at the weightage of the syllabus 35 percent of the syllabus consists of slfrss we know there are about 40 accounting standards have been uh, issued by CS Sri Lanka, right? So out of these standards, most of the standards are within the SL1 syllabus, so which consists of 35% of the syllabus. So thereafter, group accounts, which means consolidation, how to prepare the consolidated financial statements, right? When you have a parent company and subsidiaries, you might have an associate, you might have a foreign subsidiary. You need to learn about how to prepare the consolidated cash flow in addition to the consolidated statement of profit and loss and consolidated statement of financial position. All these things would be included, so which consists of 20% of the syllabus. Uh, thereafter, as mentioned, uh, emphasis was given in terms of the risk of material misstatements by looking at the set of financial statements, how to identify risk of material misstatements right so which consists of 25 percent of the syllabus and thereafter governance and non-financial reporting non-financial reporting in the sense things like integrated reporting right so which covers 15 percent of the syllabus and finally five percent of the syllabus consists of ethics so out of these five areas what i'm going to cover is slfrss as well as the group accounts right so the relevant areas of the financial reporting. So these three topics would be covered by the lecturer who is uh, teaching the risk governance and ethics part. Right. Moving on. So thereafter you also should be aware about the exam format, how your paper structure is. Right. So it's a three hours paper, pass mark is 50 percent, but don't target for 50, target for 90, then at least you will be end up by getting 50. Right. So uh, then if you look at the structure of the paper, there are two sections, section 1 and section 2. So the marks allocation is 50 marks for the two questions in section 1, which means section 1 consists of two questions, each carries 25 marks. So that's how these 50 marks are consist of. These are actually scenario based questions, right? Not the direct questions about the accounting standards not the definitions and all that. So these are scenario based uh, questions, application of the syllabus areas would be tested in these uh, two questions what is there in the section number one. 
So thereafter, section 2 consists of one question that is actually based on the common pre-scene, right? So you'll be given the unseen scenario in the examination and there are questions. In terms of this uh, section 2 or this particular question, 50 mark question, you would definitely have consolidation uh, adjustment. Consolidation areas are tested in this particular unseen. Okay, based on the common phrasing, there will be an unseen, then the consolidation areas would be tested definitely over here. In addition to that, in addition to the consolidation, uh, you will be tested about the accounting standards, risk of material misstatements, or any other area of the syllabus what we discussed earlier, right? Unseen based on the common phrasing given. Right, so now we know that what is the syllabus weightage as well as how the paper structure is. That's about your examination. Moving on. As I mentioned earlier, recently, that is in 2023, there was a curriculum change. Before that, actually, in this paper, there was a part called auditing. Auditing standards were tested, right? But now, with this curriculum change, as I mentioned earlier, this paper focuses on how you are going to act as a future CFO. You need to have a holistic view about the financial reporting aspect not only to know about the standards and the consolidation, but by analyzing, by looking at set of financial statements, how to interpret those financial statements. Then how to identify risk of material misstatements in the financial statements. For an example, let's say under the current economic context, right? So the buying power, purchasing power of the people are poor. So because of that, now the organization that you are talking about is in the, let's assume in the FMCG industry, so the goods that they manufacture, produce, are having a less demand. So the people are not consuming. Then what will happen is there can be an inventory accumulation. Then as the CFO, he should have the mindset to identify now there can be a situation of inventory overvaluation. Because why? Once the inventory items are there in your warehouse for a longer period, there might be a possibility of what? obsolete inventory would be created. So he has to know that, okay, there can be a risk of material misstatement. I have to check that whether the inventory valuation is correct. Cost or net realizable value, whichever is lower. In addition to that, the machinery, plant and machinery that you use to produce these goods, if you don't have a demand for the products that the company manufacture, so these plant and machinery items might be what, idling. So that's trigger to a what, impairment? indicator. So what I'm telling is that is the CFO's perspective, not to look at PNL and balance sheet and say that this is the performance, this is the financial performance, this is the financial position. He has to identify these are the areas where there can be risk of material misstatements that would be there in the financial statements. So with the curriculum change, so it looks at CFO's perspective of identifying risk of material misstatements. There are learning outcomes included into your syllabus in terms of this particular matter. As I mentioned earlier, there were auditing standards which are tested in this paper. Now those have been removed, but the knowledge, basic knowledge about the auditing is important, right? Like internal control, inherent risk, control risk. So in, you should know about this concept, but directly auditing standards are not going to be tested as well as audit procedures have been taken out from the paper SL1 with this curriculum change. Right, so then moving into the important aspect that is about what are the changes which were taken into account in terms of the financial reporting, actually in terms of financial accounting and reporting pillar relevant to your subject that is SL1, these are the changes that were actually, that was applicable from December 2023 paper onwards, right? So these changes were actually applicable from December 2023 paper onwards. That means definitely for your examination also, these changes are applicable. So if you look at the changes, so these changes are actually relevant with the accounting standards. There are four accounting standards. Number one is SLFRS 17 insurance contract. Now earlier before this change, 
this particular standard was not within the syllabus. But now it is included within the syllabus. That means you should know about this standard, it's LFRS 17 insurance contract. This is mostly, uh, mostly important for the insurance companies where they enter into or their main business is to get a, enter into the insurance contracts with the clients, right? So how to account for these insurance contract is the main area which is covered in SLFRS 70. But the good news is this is introduced but if this is tested in the examination that's going to be tested as level C testing. What does that mean? So I told you earlier you have about 40 accounting standards, right? Altogether you have 40 accounting standards. Now all these standards when it comes to the testing of the examination is not given the same depth, which means examiner is not expecting students to have the same amount or same level of knowledge in terms of all these standards. Because of that, what happens is when it comes to these accounting standards, those have been categorized into three levels, I would say. Level A testing, level B testing and level C testing. Okay, A, B and C, right? Now, SLFRS 17, insurance contract, is going to be tested if it is tested in the examination as level C testing. But to understand level C, you should know level A and level B. What does that mean by level A testing? What do you mean by level A testing? Which means if a particular standard is tested as a level A standard, the student should have a thorough knowledge about the standard and they should know that how to apply the standard for a complicated accounting matter, complicated transaction. That means you need to know the details. You have to go into depth and understand about that particular standard. That is level A testing. When it comes to level B, level B means good knowledge. In level A, thorough knowledge, but level B, good knowledge. Good knowledge about the standard and the students should aware how to apply this standard for a moderately complicated transaction. Moderately complicated transaction or accounting matter or accounting issue. Right? That is about the level B testing. Level C testing means where examiner is expecting only a conceptual knowledge about the standard and the standard application would be with regard to a simple accounting matter, simple transaction. Now with regard to the insurance contracts, which means students should have a conceptual knowledge. You should understand, okay, what is the scope of this standard? So what is the model or oh, there are a few models which is discussed in SLFRS 17 insurance contract standard. What are these main models which are discussed in the standard? What are the recognition, measurement, presentation and the disclosure requirements to apply the standard for a simple straightforward transaction? So if it is tested in the examination, it would be a very basic question, right? Okay. So we'll be learning about this standard over the uh, course right so we'll do a video i'll be doing a video with regard to this so there you can understand the details about the standard that is actually the first change in terms of the financial reporting pillar then the second area in terms of the financial reporting pillar or the in terms of the accounting standard is lk is one presentation of financial statements with regard to this standard there are a couple of changes actually one is with regard to the classification of liabilities into current or non-current. So, you know, when you are presenting liabilities in the statement of financial position, what we need to do? We have to classify them into either a current or non-current liabilities. So, there are certain new rules, provisions have been introduced in terms of the classification of liabilities into current and non-current. So, we'll be looking that over the... Uh, lecture series so i'll do a video where you will understand i'm not going to explain about the rules and the provisions at this moment because this is an introduction video so what i wanted to mention you is okay there's a change like this has happened so we'll be discussing about these changes once we go through the video lectures right 
So then LKS 1 has one more change that is with regard to the accounting policy disclosures. Before this change, if you can remember, when it comes to accounting policies, accounting policies are part of set of financial statements, one element of financial statements of the organization. What accounting policies are to be disclosed before this revision? You have to disclose significant accounting policies which are applicable for the particular organization. The word significant. With this change, with this amendment or with this update, what has happened is what entities are required to do is to disclose the material accounting policies. You should understand, okay, where or in what situation an accounting policy would become material. Yet again, we'll be discussing that in detail once I go through the lecture series. Right, so that is about the second standard, LKS 1. Then the next standard where there's a change in terms of the financial reporting pillar, in terms of the accounting standard is LKS 8. Accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates and errors. So that is the name of the standard. What is the change is, even though the standard was there for a long period of time, up until this revision, there was no definition for the accounting estimates. What, what do you mean by accounting estimate? We know there are a lot of accounting estimates that we make when preparing the financial statements, right? Example, when we have a property plant and equipment item, we need to estimate what is the useful life of the property plant and equipment item. So the useful life is an accounting estimate. But there was, a, there was no definition for the word accounting estimate with the update or with the revision, there is now a definition for the word accounting estimates. We'll again look at once we uh, discuss this matter in terms of a video lecture. Right. Then we discuss about the changes in terms of the SLFR S17, LKAS1, LKAS8. The last change is in terms of LKS12 income tax standard. You know income tax standard consists of two things, current tax and deferred tax. Current tax is the amount of tax that you pay to the government based on your taxable profit. Deferred tax is an accountant's adjustment to take the tax effect of a particular transaction to the relevant accounting period. And these are a bit of a, I would say, a technical and students believe that it's a complex accounting standard, but it's not, when you understand the logic, it's not complex. But anyway, so what the standard says is, in, especially in terms of the deferred taxes, when there's a temporary difference, either taxable or deductible temporary difference, you need to recognize the deferred tax impact, which means you need to recognize the deferred tax liability or the deferred tax asset. So that is the general rule in the standard. But in para 15 and 24 of this standard LKS 12, it provides certain exemptions to this general rule, which means if the criteria mentioned in para 15 and 24 are satisfied, even though there is a temporary difference, you don't need to recognize the deferred tax asset and the liability. So exemptions were given in the standard. But what is the change? What is the revision? What is the update? Update is these exemptions were narrowed down. Right? So certain exemptions which were given in the standard have been reduced, narrowed down. I'm not going to explain at this moment about these exemptions and what is narrowed down because why it's technical standard. Once we do the standard, I will explain about okay what is the change is. So in brief, so these are the main changes which has happened in the financial accounting and reporting pillar or in terms of the accounting standards which is applicable for your syllabus and as I mentioned accounting standards consist of what? Altogether 35% weightage when it comes to your paper SL1. Right. Moving on. Right. Now I'm explaining you the course content. So how I'm going to taking you through over this course during the remaining five months period, right? So when it comes to your course, there are two main modules. 
Number one is essential theory module. In the essential theory module, what happens is all topics. So as I mentioned, mainly accounting standards, consolidation. So all topics are covered through the recorded videos and these recorded videos are high quality pre-recorded videos and these videos would be uploaded into your LMS on a weekly basis, right? In addition to that, sometimes you see that, okay, this is theory module, no computations, no calculations, no. What happens is within the theory module itself, I'll be discussing questions for each and every learning outcome to understand the theory and apply the theory into a practical scenario what is getting tested in the examination. So remember, even though this is the theory module, we'll be discussing exam type questions to cover all the learning outcomes what is there in your syllabus, right? So that is actually the first module uh, in this particular course. Then in this theory module, as I mentioned, I'll be uploading videos on weekly basis, which means every Friday, there are videos uploaded where you can focus on watching these videos during the weekend. But it doesn't mean that that is the only time that you need to watch the videos because the model offered by Infinity, actually it's very convenient because these videos are accessible from any time, anywhere, any number of times. Right? So you can decide when are you going to watch the videos, whether, whether it is during weekends, morning, evening, at night. 24-7 where you can focus on your studies, you can decide at what time I'm going to watch the video, but as a practice, what we do at Infinity is these videos would be uploaded into the LMS on a weekly basis for you to ensure that you are maintaining the phase in terms of your examination. Right. So let's look at the study plan in terms of the financial reporting aspect. First of all, we'll be starting with the standards, accounting standards. There are sections. So what I have done is, so these uh, video lectures I have divided into few main sections and the detail name is also given in the second column, the particular video name. And also in the third column, what you have is the date on which each video is getting uploaded. If you look at now, when it comes to the current context or the current situation, nine asset related standards like PP and e investment properties, borrowing cost. So there are altogether nine asset related standards have been uploaded, already uploaded into your LMS. That is done, which was done on 29th of December. Altogether nine asset related standard. Okay, I'm not going to go through each and every standard name, right? Thereafter, in addition to that, 5th of January, 5th of January, conceptual framework and the regulatory framework is also uploaded into the LMS where you can watch the videos now. Okay, if you have the access to the LMS, access to the course, which means by now, you have the access to nine asset related standard as well as conceptual and the regulatory framework. Then, similarly, each week, so the next week we'll be uploading presentation of financial statements. So the videos relevant to that. There are uh, five standards which are coming under that particular section. So those five standards would be uploaded by 12th January. Thereafter provisions, contingent liabilities and the contingent asset, right, which is LK37. Then one of the important standards when it comes to the examination, revenue from contracts with customers, SLFRS15 would be uploaded by 26th of January. Moving on, disclosure related standard that is SLFRS 8 and LKS 24 would be uploaded by 2nd of February. Likewise, the areas employee benefits, LKS 19, financial instrument, very important and lengthy standard I would say. There are a number of videos there, financial instruments. Then share based payment, another important standard, income taxes, LKS 12, all these things would be uploaded in the given date and I'll ensure that those are uploaded on those particular dates without any delay, right. Moving on, Reasons 
Now the important standard SLFR 16. So it has actually six parts uploaded by 8th May. Then other standards like LKS 21, LKS 7 and finally uh, earnings per share would be uploaded by 22nd of March. Now what I want to tell you is by 22nd of March I am done with all the accounting standards. 35% of your weightage of the syllabus and this is the bulky area in terms of the financial reporting. We are done with those. Then I move into the other important area of the financial reporting part that is consolidation group accounts starting from principles of consolidation. So starting the upload from 29th of March thereafter similar to the accounting standards each week there's a section of consolidation would be uploaded into the LMS. So acquisition of subsidiary, disposal of subsidiary complex groups like vertical groups, D-shaped group, mixed group. So those would be covered under the complex groups. Then group accounting, foreign currency, how to consolidate the financial statements of a foreign subsidiary. Group statement of cash flow, how to prepare the consolidated cash flow would be discussed. And finally, Small company reporting and first time adoption that is SLFRS for SME standard and SLFRS 1 first time adoption standard would be uploaded last after uploading the consolidation videos because for you to understand these two standards you should have the knowledge about the consolidation as well that's why I kept that for last so which means everything would be done by 17th of May which means you have one month time to get ready for the other module or the second module of this course which is the exam preparation module right so this is the plan so you have to maintain your discipline of watching the videos on the particular date don't try to wait until the examination time to do the everything you don't have time then right so ensure that you watch the videos on the relevant date and power with the schedule always right then as I mentioned, next module is exam preparation module. So people refer this as revision module. So here, this revision module is built or tailor-made to apply the theory and how to, by applying the theory, how to craft an answer where you can get the full marks in the examination. Right? So because here I need to guide you, teach you, in terms of the way that you need to tackle the question, handle the questions. So what I would do is revision module or the exam preparation module, I am following a blended approach, which means there are, there are recorded videos as well as there are certain live online lectures or certain live online sessions, which I am going to take to cover the exam preparation module. Right, I'll tell you the number of hours that we are going to spend on the exam preparation module in a little while. But it's a blended way or blended approach. In addition to the recorded videos, there will be live sessions, online live sessions would be conducted to teach you and guide you to ensure that you are crafting an answer in the examination within the time period available to get the full marks. Right. So, what are we going to do in terms of the revision or in terms of this exam preparation module? How many accounting standards questions? 50 accounting standards questions would be discussed. This is in addition to the questions discussed in the essential theory module, right? Past papers and the model papers. Model paper questions are mainly taken from international examinations like AZCA. So altogether 50 accounting standards questions would be discussed before you go to the examination. Plus 12 consolidation questions. So which means by the time of the examination you will be super ready. Because why? You have answered 50 exam type accounting standards questions and 12 exam type consolidation questions. Yet again the consolidation questions are taken from all the past papers in the SL1 uh, syllabus. Right? Actually SL1 was introduced or the revision or this paper SL1 was introduced in 2020. From that particular point onwards, all the past papers would be discussed 
in this uh, exam preparation module. In addition to that, what can be tested in UA examination? Model questions are taken from the international examinations like ACCA, right? How many hours that you're going to spend? 50 accounting standards questions, 12 consolidation questions, plus we also need to discuss about the pre seen which will be released by CS Sri Lanka uh, roughly one month before the examination. We need to discuss that pre seen as well in depth. So the pre scenes that I have done in the previous sessions are uploaded into the YouTube as well, where you can understand, watch and see that how much of depth that we went into the pre seen analysis by looking at the annual report of the real companies, listed companies. So similar type of an analysis would be done for your examination as well. So, this is very important. So, in your exam preparation module or revision module, how many hours of pre-recorded videos would be available? 70 hours of pre-recorded videos plus 30 hours of live sessions, which means your exam preparation module itself consists of 100 hours of time. So, where before you go to the examination, everything again one more time now you have the essential theory module in the exam preparation module entire syllabus would be discussed in way of questions right it's a question based revision covering the entire syllabus which consists of 100 hours 70 hours of pre-recorded videos and 30 hours of live sessions right so when you go to the examination you don't need to do any other thing watch the videos in terms of the essential theory module and spend 100 hours on this so you will definitely get a good result in the examination if you follow the instructions right okay then there are certain things that you need to do by yourself to successfully complete the examination so i would name this as prerequisite for the examination success right so these are the things that you need to do learning with discipline what does that mean now i have given you the study plan you need to ensure that you watch the video during the relevant week right for that you need to have the passion and living in the subject what does that mean don't try to do everything just two weeks before the examination during this next five months time you need to live in the subject right you have to have the passion you should like it because these accounting standards consolidation that you're going to that you're going to learn in this module in this subject is not just for you to complete your examination right because why in your career you will become an accountant finance manager cfo finance director so this has to be your bible Accounting standard knowledge, consolidation knowledge, you should have a passion on that. This is not just for the exam completion, but also for the entire career of you as a chart accountant. Right? Then the next thing. Self power play for reflection. I would say mind mapping. So do your basics well. Now let's say if it's a complicated accounting standard like financial instruments. Let's say you have topics, impairment of financial assets then hedge accounting, derivatives, right? When it comes to these topics, you would think that, okay, these are complex. But always try to create a mind map. You should understand, okay, these are the five key points that I need to get out of this, right? So that's why during my lecture series, what I do, what I would do always is, I create diagrams, pictures. That is the mind map that you need to create by yourself. And that is what you need to remember when it comes to the examination. Otherwise, this is a bulky subject. You can't learn by heart. Always create a mind map. Always create a picture in your mind. When you study, and I will guide you how to do that during our uh, session. Finally, master the art of writing. So, when you are answering for the questions, you can do two things. One is, you read the question. Then you answer the question by yourself you do it by yourself then you look at the answer might be your answer is not correct but you have attempted that before you go through the answer that is one approach so if you follow that approach you will be successful that is the approach that you need to follow read the question 
try to answer by yourself then after answering look at the answer the other approach where some people are doing is what you read the question and you read the answer as well and you expect to produce that answer in the examination most of the times you are not going to most of the time you are not going to be successful because why you are reading the question you are reading the answer you never answer the questions by yourself so what i always advise the students is to follow the first approach so master the art of writing at least one question every week write and practice right so this is actually what we are going to cover in the examination exam preparation module in the second module i am going to you know cover this area in detail so how to master the art of writing but the general advice i have given it to you now please follow the instruction right okay moving on so that is about the course content as i mentioned there are two key modules right essential theory module and the examination exam preparation module i have explained you how the essential theory module would be uh, consist of or how i am going to cover the areas in the essential theory module and how i am going to cover the areas in the exam preparation module so i just wanted to give couple of thoughts before you know finishing this introduction session that is so what is the best investment that you can make at this moment you are a student what is the best investment so as per famous american writer and scientist benjamin franklin according to him investment in knowledge pay the best interest right so at the moment you are following the chartered accountancy qualification so why do you follow chartered accountancy qualification maybe to have a i would say in monetary terms have a good income have have to have the financial autonomy right so you know earning first 100000 is the most difficult thing thereafter you can go up to maybe 200000 500000 1 million that's not difficult so chartered accountancy qualification is important for you to create the financial autonomy by yourself but you should understand money is not everything after reaching to a particular level you will understand there are limited things that you can do by using money right you can't do everything by using money but at this moment it's important for you frankly in addition to that you want to have the social status right so when you become a chartered accountant people recognize you they respect you you can mention in your passport saying that i am a chartered accountant then you are a globally accepted resource right at this moment you know a lot of people are migrating right so always having the qualification is an added advantage for you to migrate and also not only for the migration but also because of these migration there are a lot of opportunities in the local market right so obviously to get a good opportunity to get a good job offer in the local market yet again the qualification is important so that ensure that when you are a student your time your commitment your effort you should invest for yeah in gathering knowledge that would pay you the best return best interest right the other point what i wanted to mention is uh, yet again another american writer uh, r collier what is it success is the sum of small efforts repeated now let's apply to our context now this statement why the i have given you a study plan so now what you need to do one by one each week you need to watch these videos so these are what small efforts so once you repeatedly do those things by the examination time you will be ready for the examination so you can complete the examination so when it comes to sum of small efforts once you repeatedly do you will be achieving the success the goal that you want to achieve so now the model what is offered in infinity again i am reminding is very convenient right so you can watch the videos any time anywhere any number of times so if you are a morning person if you want to watch these videos before you go to work watch that in the morning if you want to watch that evening late night you can do that as well so while traveling if you have opportunity to watch one video you can watch it so do these take these small steps one by one and where you can achieve your success or where you can achieve your goal right 
then uh, if you have any questions in terms of this introduction session or else any of the videos what is available in the uh, what you call essential theory module or during the time where we have the where we cover the exam preparation module always the questions can be raised to me directly through the telegram group or else you can con even contact the administration staff at infinity or else you can directly contact me uh, through the telegram group where so there are separate group created for that so those questions would be clarified then and there so uh, that's it with regard to the introduction session i wish you all the best to complete the paper sl1 during this examination session and hope to see you as future chartered accountants uh, in the near future thank you